Good morning, everybody. We, uh, we're here on our final day. We're gonna go for a walk. They have a loud market today. We've got to pack up. I want to talk about some of the essentials that we take with us when traveling throughout Thailand. I'm gonna just call ourselves professional travels, travelers. We've been traveling ever since we got here seven years ago. We have put on a couple hundred thousand kilometers throughout Thailand. And uh, we've been to just about every province here in Thailand. So we are seasoned travelers, I guess you could say more so. But I want to talk about some of the things that we bring with us on our trips when we bring our vehicle, when we travel through uh, throughout Thailand. Good morning. Good morning. Are you all packed up and ready to go? Uh, I got my underwear. You got underwear packed? Well, that's a pretty good essential. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, underwear is a very important thing to bring on a trip. Actually, one time I forgot and I only had one pair. Good morning. <laughs> and Paige had to wash my underwear every night. Oh. That was in Vietnam and I couldn't find any grown up size, so that was my option. Anyway, clothing, yeah. We don't really, we, we used to pack a lot of stuff. Like we'd go for a week, we'd bring like a week and a half worth of clothes. I think that was the, uh, our style we brought with us from the States. But we've learned it's not necessary. And, and uh, there's there's places to wash your clothes everywhere in Thailand, so it's not necessary. Yeah, beautiful. I think it's just this area. It's yeah. really good sun. Okay. Um, anyways, very inexpensive, and they fold your clothes, which is a good thing, you know. And we usually have everything washed right before we come home. So Paige doesn't have to mess with it. Everything is nice and neat. And we pack it up and, and go. We don't really bring too many clothes. I always bring an extra pair of sandals. I've had a couple occasions where they've come up missing <laughs> or they break. And traveling around Thailand, sometimes where we go, it's difficult to find a proper sandal. I will say this. The only thing I could wear when I first got here was Crocs because they were the most comfortable for my feet. But my feet have really adapted to Thailand and I can pretty much wear anything. But I like those, what are they called that we get them from a Locust brand, the ABBA? I wouldn't say ABBA, but I'm thinking of that Swedish band. Beautiful, ain't it? It's clear. Ada. Ada. Mm -hmm. Very clear today. Um, you know, I got a good quality pair of tennis shoes now that I bought in Malaysia. So I always carry an extra pair. Paige always has an extra pair of everything, even underwear. Mm -hmm. I bring an extension cord, obviously, because I, I carry a lot of computer stuff. But not just my com my extension cord. I carry a, an extremely long cord because sometimes you want to plug in something outside, or you only have one plug in the damn room. <laughs> and that's it. Mm -hmm. That being said, you have to have that adapter to um, to plug in. You know, just a, a travel adapter. If you don't have one, they sell them everywhere here. They sell them all over 7-Eleven which is everywhere in Thailand, basically. So don't worry about that. He's got his chair ready to go. We carry like pl paper plates. It's not necessary, but a lot of times we like to go to markets when we travel. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the rooms aren't set up for that and a lot of times you can go down to the lobby and get you a plate or two but we just assume carry some plastic wear because mm -hmm. um, we might want to eat back at the room or you know eat in the hotel or whatever from a market mm -hmm. 
We carry multiple copies of my documentation here in Thailand. I keep it in the truck. Vehicle registration, which is the page's name, uh, insurance, copies of my visa, passport, documentation for me being in Thailand. Uh, we carry that in a binder always in the truck. It stays in the truck, actually. It's just copies. We have really good insurance. I got over the top insurance. Whenever you buy a vehicle, it has to have that little sticker in the window. That is a that is just a basic. It comes with basic, like a liability insurance. You don't have to get a major insurance. Auto repair is really inexpensive here, and if you get into a minor accident, you can just pay with some bot you have. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend getting insurance. It's roughly about five hundred to a thousand dollars a year, depending on what kind of vehicle you have and um, you don't want to get into a major accident uh, as a foreigner and not have insurance i think just my suggestion um, and the insurance that i got is it covers like factory you got to be careful because a lot of times you have to look the parts replacement the body part replacement for the vehicle the insurance company recommends second-hand or aftermarket. And the one I got, it, that definitely specifically says dealer parts only. If you leave your province for a long period of time, you really need to carry your passport. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recommend carrying it around with you in the streets when you're traveling. You can lock it up in the safe. Or if you have a secure place to keep it on you, then do that. Whatever whatever you do, just make sure it's safe. Not a whole lot of theft in Thailand, but in some areas where there's a lot of tourists, there are pickpocketers. So I don't need to tell you guys that. You already know that. But um, always carry a copy of your passport in your pocket. But I'm saying this because a lot of people, they have a pink card or... I carry a driver's license around. Driver's license typically works, but if you get in a major problem, an accident, uh, you need to have a passport. And a lot of times, like if you want to rent a motorbike or something, they want to make a copy of your passport. And sometimes they want to hold your passport. That's a lot of beer. Mm -hmm. When you guys owned that, did you, was that house there too, or just the land? I don't know, I was small. Looks like that thing's been there a long time. Back in the old days, it's all wooden house. Water taxis coming from Laos. I've said this before in case you missed it, make sure you take photocopies of everything that's important to you and email it to yourself. So that way, if your passport gets stolen, having the number or even a picture of it really helps a lot in obtaining a new one. So uh, make sure you email that as long as there's access somewhere to a computer or the internet, I'll say, you can get that information. We've had several garments. Our Fortuner has a pretty good GPS system in it. I found the best thing that works is Google Maps in Thailand because it has accurate information on accidents, travel time, through traffic, stuff like that. It's not perfect. Trust me, I know. Sometimes the wild goose chases are fun. Sometimes it's like, uh, you didn't know this road was closed. That's Google knew everything or they take me down a bicycle path, you know? But I found that Google Maps works the best. And a lot of times you can, well not a lot of times, you can download the map on your phone uh, so you don't have to worry about internet. But then your accuracy of time is not gonna be correct, you know? 
but it, it's good if you're in the mountains. We've never had a problem where it just dropped out and couldn't use it. And we have several options in the truck, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna drive, a little bit of street knowledge always helps. Knowing um, what other drivers are good, kind of understanding the lingo and the country that you're visiting. Like for example, in the US, if you flash your lights at somebody, it means a couple things. There's a cop ahead, which that means the same here. They'll flash it multiple times or there's danger ahead. Um, but a lot of times it means that you're going to give somebody the right of way. Here, that's the opposite. If they're flashing their light, they're coming. Uh, they're not stopping. They're changing lanes. They're in your lane. You got to figure out how to get out of their way. Um, if somebody is trying to yield for you, a lot of times they'll just use their, they'll turn their emergency flashers on and they'll also turn their flashers on if they need to quickly stop ahead. They see something ahead they'll hit their flashers until they come to a stop a lot of times as a courtesy when you see somebody in front of you turn their blinker on to the right they're letting you know you can't pass or maybe they're gonna turn pretty soon but they're letting you know that don't go around if they turn the left blinker on you know obviously it means we're gonna turn left eventually or they're telling you it's clear don't always trust that clear because what they're clear is maybe not clear for you. A lot of times they'll just, they'll just go when they wanna go and the person coming on just kinda of pulls over to the shoulder if there is a shoulder. I feel like driving's a lot better here in Thailand than in the US. Uh, I kinda, of, I'm okay with it, I've embraced it. If you're gonna go, go. Um, it's like synchronized chaos here sometimes. But I prefer it like that. We can all make a conscious decision, I think, and, uh, and just go. And you gotta think ahead a lot of times. Like the guy coming out of the soil, most likely he's not gonna stop. That's why a lot of times people don't like to drive in the left lane, me especially, because there's too much stuff coming at you. And when a car's in the left lane and you're in the right lane, they will yield to that person and come over at you. Because if you hit somebody on a motorbike, it's most of the time your fault. So they do try to avoid that, especially large trucks. So I don't like to stay next to anybody here. Not, you know, I either get behind them or in front of them, especially big trucks. Monday's the busiest day of the uh, market. It's here Monday and Thursday. Obviously you can see it's way out here now. So let's just walk through the market real quick. That's a four-wheel drive. <laughs> They're just waiting on the extra wheel. This lady here with the black uh, umbrella is everywhere in Thailand, everywhere. She doesn't really, everybody, everybody pays attention to her. And uh, they look out for her. I try to tell my mom about her, you know. People, they just wait patiently and when they can get around her, they go because they know that she's an elderly woman. It's a little different in here. You won't get run over like in the States. Or beeped at. Or yelled at. That's cool. Get that for Pa. It's her color. Fresh greens. Hello. Hello, Swadi Kap. Tamarine, it's tamarine season. I hear puppies.
Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm uh, fine. Okay. You? I'm good. Every day, fine. Yeah, keep happy day. You too. I would say that. Uh, she likes to practice uh, English. I'm only telling you about kind of road uh, rules, rules of the road. A lot of people come here they want to rent a car or they're thinking about renting a car but they're not sure but, um, let's talk about stop signs uh, the stop signs are really just letting you know if there's traffic and you have a stop sign you're obligated to stop it's a suggestion really like you're supposed to stop you're not supposed to drive out into the main road do you have to stop no like there's nobody here to tell you you can't first off but you just got to play it safe you have to uh sync it synchronized chaos that's interesting um, but if you're driving through a town and or a little side streets you, you really can't stop because you can't see because everything is kind of pulled right up to the street so You'll see cars kind of just nosing out in the middle of the road and you're like, what the hell? Is it because they can't see behind the obstacles. So they have to get out a little bit and look. Everybody's used to that here. You must stop at stop signs. I mean, red lights. Intersections, red lights, it's very important to stop. In Thailand, signals, turn signals, stop lights, things that light up are very important here uh, always use your turn signals when changing lanes especially if you're in Bangkok because the people behind you are dependent on that they need to know what you're doing so if they see your light come on they know you're gonna just turn at some point um, if you don't then you can cause problems and some anger issues <laughs> beautiful day this morning do not beep, aggressively beep. Beeping your horn for a duration of time is, a, uh, is not acceptable in Thailand for the most part. You wanna see some, somebody's coming out tapping, beep, 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 letting them know that, hey, I'm here. Or hey, you need to get off your phone and go through the stoplight. I mean, go through the green light. <laughs> you know, you need, this, uh, tap, tap is okay. You don't want to get into an aggressive battle with somebody here in Thailand. Um, they don't fight fair, I'll tell you that. They usually have some kind of, you know, for being such a peaceful country and people are so friendly, if you cause somebody to lose face here, um, yeah, it could never end. So just, yeah, try to just remember land of smiles, right? Work it out. If you get into a predicament on the road, like an accident, you need to have a couple of numbers. First number you need to have is to your insurance company. Um, they need to be the one to help you. Um, then, you know, one, what is it, 1411 emergency? If there's an emergency or something. I don't even know the emergency number. What is it? Huh? Uh, that's sad I can't give you that I think it's 1411 but um, as a foreigner I don't know how well that's gonna help you but uh, insurance company is the first person you need to call and we have an agent so we call our agent when the cops and buy me a hop how are you <laughs> So my agent will try to figure things out of what's going on for me. Second number, which is very important, is my attorney. Uh, I have an attorney on retainer. I share, the, I share the link to this place in every video I have, and he can help me with anything. If I'm being harassed by another foreigner, you know, get an accident, I need to purchase a car, buy a condominium, 
get a permit, get my visa extended. Whatever problems I have, I wanna buy a motorbike, I can call them and they'll handle it for me. That is probably one of the most important tools that I have if I run into a problem in Thailand. I can call this law office and um, they'll handle it for me. They've already handled a couple things for me. They've probably handled thousands of our uh, viewers on this channel, which I know they have because he, he tells me about it. But it's a very important number to have. As a visa holder, you do have rights in Thailand. So you don't have to be a victim of whatever your circumstance is. You, you do have some rights here in Thailand. If you're not sure, you can call and ask them. And if you're not, if you want to do something and you're not sure you can do it as a foreigner, you can call them and ask them about it. If you can do it or what does it take to be able to do that and you know and they'll help you through through the process especially if you want to buy a condo and you're not sure about the legalities you know the this the fine print like that. people ask me about triple a we really don't have anything like that. Again, we can call our insurance company and uh, have them guide us through. If we have a problem on the road, they can help us out. Yeah. It probably is some kind of thing like AAA. I don't have it. I don't use it. Um, I said I just uh, I have this little thing on my neck here I just <laughs> use it for luck uh, if I have a problem and I've had a flat tire before I can just change the spare myself but I'm sure you can call your insurance company mm -hmm. and uh, they'll help guide you through it the insurance company has some kind of travel assistance or emergency yeah. assistance do we have that just call the agent and then I look. Yeah, we just have to call the agent. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm Whatever here. close by. Yeah. Uh, we have maximum coverage I could get, so I would hope so. Anytime you get on the road anywhere, I think, in the world, you're taking your life at your own risk. Driving in these little vans and VIP buses used to be extremely dangerous. They still are somewhat dangerous. But they're now, they've kind of lowered the fatality rate because they have to have a monitored GPS on the vehicle that makes a little beep, beep, beep noise whenever it gets over 90 kilometers. And it's a warning to the driver. And it also, so it, it also uh, reports them for, for, uh, for going over the speed limit so they does it work 100% no and if it's a privatized company maybe maybe they don't have it or they got it turned off or it doesn't matter if the guy maybe he owns the van come over here babe we'll in the road so but it has helped quite a bit because when I first got here, they had these double-decker VIP vans that would go like 140 kilometers down the road. And the van, the little minivans too. Very dangerous. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. Fine. Okay. okay. Yes okay. Yesterday sell good? Uh, good sales? Uh, hey, you, my? Not better than... Uh, Saturday. Oh, Saturday's a good day. Saturday huh? is better. Maybe you sell everything today. I, of course. Hope, hope, hope. Yeah, yeah. Hope so. I don't see why not. You're in a good spot. Ah. For <laughs> now. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, you, see, see you. you. You too. Look, if you get in an accident, 
as a foreigner, maybe it's not your fault. Uh, usually a couple thousand baht will fix a problem in Thailand. Um, usually, maybe 4,000. Remember this, other than if you think it's like a, a pride thing, maybe you win, maybe you, maybe you won't. Maybe you just cause more problems for yourself. But maybe you just lose like $100, okay? Um, that's up to you. I just, you know, if it's not that big of a deal to you, it's best just to say, okay, look, here's a couple thousand baht. Let's just, whatever, doesn't matter. Unless it's blatantly their fault, then it's best to have cameras in the car. Cameras are very affordable here. We're in the road, babe. Uh, front and rear camera is very inexpensive and to get them installed is almost free and a lot of car toys places here in Thailand that install it for little to nothing very important to have a camera here and you can get a good system for around a hundred dollars cheapest way to travel throughout Thailand it's probably train. They're working on the infrastructure right now. They're actually gonna put a train system here through our town. Uh, but they got a pretty good system here. Um, Udon has a system to get you anywhere in Thailand. You just gotta connect. I think train might be the cheapest way. Uh, then you got buses. You can you can get that bus right there probably all the way down to Kha Chang for about $20, about 700 baht. VIP uh, service there, but a van, a small van, go to cup, small van, like a private van, probably cost you about, yeah, it costs you a little bit more, especially if you want to hire him as a, as a driver for your trip, your destination. Flying domestically in Thailand, very cheap. Between 20 and $100 normally. Uh, to fly domestically one way. If you time it right, a lot of times you can get an airplane ticket for between 20 and $30. That's a pretty good way to get around. If you're traveling between airports, Suwanapum and Don Muang, they have a free transit system there. You just go down, I think it's uh, gate number, I think it's gate four. Uh, you'll see a thing called uh, DOT and you just show them your airline ticket, your passport, and you can get a free shuttle. It doesn't have to be the same day. You know, maybe you're flying out the next day or a couple days. I've never tested the length of it, but um, it's a free, really nice bus from point A to point B. Now I've got a taxi there. Taxis are relatively inexpensive. Uh, I've got a taxi there. So at Nikop, good morning. I've gotten a taxi for about 500 baht, only because that's what I negotiated. If you get a meter, you can get it less, but I always give them a, a little bit of a tip, you know, if they do a good job, really just to help everybody out, because I don't want them to think that, you know, all of us foreigners think that they're ripping us off, and maybe they'll be nice to you, because uh, sometimes the person that's not nice to them before I get in the taxi it shows because they'll tell us a motorbike taxi is probably the cheapest way to get around town then you got uh, tuk tuks and song tao uh, song tao means two seats and it's usually uh i don't know what they call it a bot bus too um it's just two bench seats and a, and a back of a covered truck and there's a free bus if you're in Bangkok. There's a rail, underground rail, above ground rail. That's pretty, really inexpensive also. Transportation in Thailand is readily available just about everywhere you go. Some of the smaller towns, maybe the only thing available is a bicycle taxi. <laughs> but there's usually something there. There's some, we've been to places where there's horse and carriage. Not no, that remember that town? It was a lot of horses around. It's big on that horse and carriage. Uh, 
Lampang. Lampang, yeah. yeah. Of course, it's a tourist attraction, but they do have them there for taxis. Well, if you want to pay, it's uh, 100 baht a person, wasn't it? Something like that? No, but 200, uh, 200, you know, yeah. it's for 200. Yeah. You're going to use the taxi, it's too much. Yeah. You know. <laughs> You can rent bicycles. A lot of times hotels have bicycles. Mm -hmm. Motorbikes, usually 100 to 200 baht a day to rent a motorbike. <laughs> I don't know if that's the safest, smartest thing to do. There's turtles, random turtle. Okay. I saw this box here yesterday. I thought somebody left their box, but that is a box turtle actually. <laughs> I think they call that a box turtle. So it's in a box. I think you want some salad or something. Yeah, it needs water and maybe they're getting some sun. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I'm sure they probably got it under control. Walking in Thailand is very unsafe. People do not watch out for pedestrians here, period. Um, in the U.S., if you walk out of a store, you can blindly walk to your car, everybody will stop. Here they won't. So if you do that here, you may only do that one time in your life. So pedestrians must be very careful when walking. People will not look out for you. Um, bicycles might be worse if you're on a bicycle. Like, nobody cares. Like, nobody cares. Pedestrians, nobody cares about you on a bicycle. That's kind of a thing around the world, I think, for the most part. But um, when you're walking, which is what most people do here, um, you got to be really, really careful. Um, and yeah, just wait. A lot of times they will not stop for you. I don't know what's going to happen to her during the festival time. I, well, I tell everybody we got to chain her up. Got to just leave her at home. I don't know. What can I do? Um, yeah. We had to come home a little early because Paul Poole, my father-in-law shop manager, needs to come and get a part. And he don't have a key today. So right now I'm at 5,500 steps. We'll finish it up later. A lot of people come to Thailand as backpackers. That's the thing to do. I think it's a good thing in your life if you're young. It's a good experience to come, I would say, as a back. To me, a backpacker means that you're like a minimalist. Now, what I don't understand, and I don't know if you guys can explain it to me or not, if maybe you're backpackers. I see some of these backpackers and they've got, they've got these bags that have more shit in them than I have and my entire truck, uh, both of us. So what's the sense in bringing like every single damn thing you own in this backpack and walking it around Thailand? I don't, I don't understand that. It's not like you're wandering off into the woods where there's no civilization, you know? Uh, even in the military, our rucksacks were not that full. We pretty much had everything we needed and a rucksack. But these guys carry everything. And I'm trying to say you don't really need all that stuff. There's, you can buy little packages of laundry detergent, wash your clothes, it'll dry in like a minute here in Thailand. You don't need to carry all that stuff. So I don't, I don't even know what's in the damn things. I just know it's a lot and it looks heavy. Like sometimes I can't even get up off the ground if they sit down. <laughs> so, backpacking. Backpackers. And then they'll stay in a hotel where there's like 14 cots. But they got their whole closet in their bag. Okay. Traveler's insurance. Make sure you have traveler's insurance. It's very affordable. Um, I don't have any recommendations for you. It just depends on where you're at. But I recommend getting it. We uh, were 
we're actually going to buy a policy for the year. We have really good insurance in Thailand. When we get closer to the time that we're going to head out of the country here in the next few weeks, we're going to buy a traveler's insurance policy for the year. It's actually really cheap, but uh, I have private insurance here. My wife has private insurance here, and uh, my wife also has government insurance here too. So all of that being said, just have a good time in Thailand. Stay out of other people's business. If you don't understand what's happening, just try not to be argumentative, uh, just smile it off. But the main thing is just have a good time and um, don't expect too much. Like, having a lot of expectations usually is where the problems are when traveling around in Thailand. But again, stay don't worry about what everybody else is doing around you make sure you've got uh everything you need covered yeah have a good time in thailand i can't wait to get back on the road tomorrow uh we'll see you uh we'll see you tomorrow on the next no time to be sad adventure bye